Welcome to our lecture online. So far we have seen that for life to be able to exist, you have to have the right kind of planet. You have to have that special type of planet, that rare planet that is a terrestrial planet rather than a gas planet. And there's few terrestrial planets compared to gas planets. Then you need to have a planet that is located in the Goldilocks zone, in the right location, not too far away, not too close to the star, otherwise it'll be too cold or too hot. And then you have to have a planet that is large enough to be able to hang on to its atmosphere. Because if it can hang on to its atmosphere, then it would lose its atmosphere. And that means that you cannot have liquid water surviving on the surface. It will simply evaporate and disappear into space. So Earth is a very unusual planet just with those things considered alone. But then not only do you need the right planet, you also need the right star. And there's all kinds of different stars in the galaxy and in the universe. And if we plot them on what we call an HR diagram, we then plot luminosity versus what we call stellar type. And you can see that there's all kinds of stellar types, O, B, A, F, G, K, M. And if you take an astronomy class, you'll learn all about that. That's a very unique chart, the HR diagram. But what it shows is that there's some very large blue colored stars. There's some slightly smaller but still large white color stars and since I couldn't draw white on white I just drew a black but that's white stars. Then we have what we call yellow stars like the sun so the sun would fall into this category. Then we have what we call orange stars and red stars and by far red stars make up 85 percent of all the stars in the galaxy and in the universe. The orange stars make up another 10% and then the 5% is all the other stars with sun-like stars being about 1-2% to of all the stars in the galaxy. Now, planets around stars that are OBAF type, in other words white or blue stars, the lifespan of these stars is far too short for life to be able to start and exist because those stars will burn up their hydrogen and turn into helium too fast and they will turn into red giants far too soon for life to be able to set a hold onto the planet. So it is not likely you'll see a terrestrial planet around one of these stars that will, uh, will be able to harbor life. On top of that, these stars are very hot stars and put out copious amount of ultraviolet radiation which again is deadly towards life and would make it difficult for life to exist. On the other side, the most common star, the M-type stars, which, contain, which are 85% of all the stars, they're simply too small. Why would that be a problem? Well, when they're that small, the Goldilocks zone is so close to the star that the planet would probably be tidally locked to the star. Just like Mercury is tidally locked to the star, so would those planets. So for example, a day on Mercury lasts for well over 100 days and you can imagine how hot it would be during the daytime for that long period of time and then at nighttime you'd have a 100 plus day nighttime and then you would have enormously cold temperatures for a very long period of time. And if the tidal locking is one to one, then the same side of the planet would always face the star and the other side of the planet would always be dark. Again, not a good place for life. On top of that, these small stars, they're not very stable in their flux and energy output. They vary a lot more, which would make it different to have a constant solar energy reception on that planet. The sun is very, very stable, and because of that, we have the same amount of sunlight reaching the Earth almost on a continual basis. The only difference is, of course, that the elliptical orbit causes us to be sometimes somewhat closer, sometimes somewhat farther away. But other than that, the sun is the perfect type of star and you can see that they're not very common. So either the star is too small or the star is too large, which makes it very unlikely for life to exist. And then when the star is just the right size, well, there's not that many of them. That's again the star you want to pick for life to be able to exist. So far, most of the, the terrestrial planets that we have found were nearby smaller stars like that and therefore not likely to find life on the surface. So, not only do you need to pick the right planet, which is very, very rare, you also need to pick the right star. Then there's a second point we have to make. There's two types of stars called population two and population one stars. The population two stars are the very old stars and the population one stars are the newer stars. Our sun is one of those newer stars. 
The difference is that old stars, population 2 stars, existed a long time ago prior to any of those type 2 supernovas and they consist primarily of hydrogen and helium which means that the planets around those stars are certainly going to be gas planets and not hospitable to life. Only the new stars could have been formed after there was a nearby supernova explosion of the type 2 and because of that they will contain some of the heavy elements and they could then also produce terrestrial planets. So even though these types of stars, the G-type star, is relatively uncommon. G-type stars that are relatively new, that contain the heavy elements, that then also contain terrestrial planets, they're even more rare. So now you see that if you start combining having the right planet in the right Goldilocks uh, uh, position, in the right size to hang out to the atmosphere, that must then be around the right kind of star, which is actually quite rare as well. And again, you begin to realize now that slowly but surely, the miracle of our existence depends upon all these special things and not just a small subset of the type of things we're going to talk about. So now you can see that life is indeed a miracle as far as existing on any given planet. The right planet, near the right star, at the right distance, it's beginning to become very difficult to find a planet that will have all those conditions for life to be able to exist. And therefore, Earth is a very unique planet so far.